Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this the Kia Carnival and first and foremost we are going to use this system to turn on the vehicle. So let's confirm. Okay, I need to put a pin here. And said it will happen soon. Let's see. Waiting for it. Come on. So right now it's still taking time. It says previously executed remote service did not complete. Please try again later. Remote service should take maximum two minutes. So I'm still waiting for the car to get turned on. And there it turns on. So this is the UVO connected car feature. Uh, that is super cool, right? Anyways, why am I doing it again? Let's do one thing. Let's turn it off. And okay, I don't know how that happens. Anyways, let's forget that for a moment. So you can do 37 features with this. And um, with the Carnival, they've added another feature which by the way happens to be that you can actually turn on the car with your smartwatch as well so there open the car i'm going to turn it off for the moment firstly yeah we've turned off the car right now and i'm going to lock it so the car is locked as well and we're going to try the other feature wherein you have to stand behind for three seconds and uh, the boot opens so i'm waiting for that to happen so that's about it stand behind for three seconds no need to wave no need to do any of that and the boot will automatically open that's super cool let's close the bootlet for the moment there it closes meanwhile <laughs> let's get ahead and start the vlog again because i missed out on a few things like showing you the engine bay and whatnot because of this connected car thing which i had to show you guys so here it is opening the hood of the vehicle and actually we have to turn on the car as well so here turning on the car rose to life lights are on and let's get ahead, ahead right away with the Kia Carnival. So this is the third generation of the Kia Carnival, also known as the Sedona in the US and Grand Carnival in Malaysia. It was unveiled in 2014, launched in 2015. This is the fifth shifted model of the Carnival. Let's open the engine bay right away. There is the engine. It says CRDI 16V. There's insulation right there. Engine bay seems quite compact as well. And the design is really nice. Up front, you get the signature Kia grille known as the Tiger Nose Grille, which looks very nice indeed front parking sensors and the ice cube fog lamps as well leds meanwhile the lights get dual projectors these are not self-leveling projectors led drl and the indicator is not an led it is actually a bulb so in terms of design the car looks nice but it gets artificial skid plates both at the front as well as the rear you can see this chrome treatment for the premium appeal and talking about chrome well these 18 inch wheels are also full of chrome 235 60 18 is the size of the tire mrf meanwhile from the side as you can see the car is super long this car is more than 5.1 meters in length the wheelbase happens to be more than three meters but in spite of the mpv size uh, in terms of size actually in terms of dimensions it matches the toyota as well as the mercedes v-class so from the rear the design looks really nice and pleasing as well again you get leds on the tail lights but you know what the indicator is also an led here i believe but lower variants do not get leds on the tail lights you get this chrome strip at the rear kia written right there says carnival and limousine limousine happens to be the top trim of the kia carnival there are three trims on offer there's premium there's prestige and there is limousine although all of them have the same size don't really understand why they call this one the limousine limousine is usually known for being longer in length so technically all the variants of the carnival happen to be limousine now i know what you guys are thinking what if you're refueling fuel and you open this gate well don't ask what will happen anyways you get a rear spoiler right there along with a shark fin antenna on the roof meanwhile rear parking sensors rear camera and from the side it looks really nice so three colors are on offer one is this one white the other is that one not sure if you guys can see it that is the other color and then there is also a silver auto written just to tell you that you know this is an automatic but it only comes with an automatic chrome door handles request sensors on all the doors let's open the boot right away like already showed you the trick of opening the boot but right now all i need to do is press a button it's a power tailgate which is actually a very nice thing the boot capacity with all the three rows up is a massive 540 liters this is a car where you can carry seven passengers and all their luggage as well but if you want to increase the boot carrying capacity you can actually recline the seat so you know press this button this actually moves the seat yeah you can pack it up like this and there it goes so you can actually increase the luggage carrying capacity by pulling it like this and it's so easy i'm able to do it with one hand 
so there it is increasing the boot carrying capacity to un above 1600 liters can fold that seat as well in fact if i want to put it back i can just pull it like this and there you know recline angle is quite a bit here with this car so there it's slotted let's pull this one as well now the spare wheel is not a full sized one so kia says the reason for that is that they don't want people to be driving on the fifth wheel so that they change the tire fast now there is this hook right there this is obviously a box with i think a uh, lot of electronics inside you get a 12 volt charging socket right there and the hook boot is massive it's massive in fact when you recline the seat you can still do it like this yeah there it goes so the flexibility of the car is amazing beyond doubt closing the boot now you might be wondering why didn't he show us the spare wheel well the spare wheel happens to be below and yeah, that's right it's right below no it's not where is the spare wheel it has to be in the boot let's open it right away i didn't know the spare wheel is kept where that is the camera of the car the rear parking camera so spare wheel is not placed here where is the spare wheel can you guys find out where the spare wheel is because i definitely cannot find it at the moment i was thinking it must be down but it's not down so spare wheel should be somewhere here yeah actually it is there only somewhere it's properly packed and multi link suspension looks really nice we have three rows to talk about so the rear doors are sliding of course and there are four ways you can open them one i will show you right away you can keep the buttons pressed on the remote of the car or you can simply pull it like this and there it opens meanwhile you can see the space in the second row is massive so there are seven eight nine seater options and this is the seven seater which also gets the option of vip seats now why are they called vip seats because it gets a leg rest here how do you open the leg rest well just pull this lever and uh, i think it's got stuck yeah pull this lever that is how you actually use the leg rest this obviously happens to be the control to move the seats ahead and behind and there's a lot of travel on offer as well meanwhile this is to tumble the seat down and you can move it easily just in case someone wants to get into the third row and this is actually to move the seat sideways so you can move the seat sideways as well yeah why so so that they say it's easier to get in when you move the seat inside it travels further behind yeah because then you know it's not going to foul with this place lot of space on offer in the second row you got armrests you got screens as well and uh, there are bottle holders too there's a bottle holder there there's a screen there there's a hook there is of course a magazine holder as well so in terms of you know space it's a very practical car now this seat also tumbles completely and folds so that you can actually walk into the rear seat that's how convenient it is right now what we're going to do is we're going to move this ahead first and foremost we need to put this down which means <clears throat> yeah that's down let's move the seat all the way ahead and that is the rear seat of the car now under thigh support is in that grade headroom is just about adequate but adults can actually sit there that is the level of space on offer in fact you also get a usb charging socket right there and uh, let's get inside which is a little bit of an effort it says isofix child seat mounts the actual isofix child seat you can recline the seat from here as well so that is basically to get your recline angle right headrests are adjustable at the rear you get sun blinds at the rear as well handle along with a light placement right there and of course ac vents right on the top again sun blinds sun blinds are there on all the rear windows which is a nice thing magazine holders right there as well so this car is a proper seven seater because people can sit in here comfortably if you don't put the seats in between and let them be on either side center passenger can be a little comfortable however because it's a 60 40 split well something can get stuck here twin cup holders along with storage space right there as well so the third row gets a big thumbs up from me let's get inside the second row of the car now i was telling you about four ways of actually opening the doors and closing them there's a button here you can use that as well to close the door and there the door closes now kia says it has tested the doors extensively so the motor won't conk off which means that it should be reliable as well here now you might be wondering which is actually the fourth way of opening the doors well in the center here there are buttons so you press this button it will open the doors and this is obviously for the sunroof you can actually decide if you don't want the tailgate to open with power meanwhile 
this is to open the rear roof and uh, the rear roof also is a proper sunroof it's not like just panoramic glass it is actually a roof which opens so this is for the front roof and there it opens as well now there are plenty of lights here as well press this once again nothing happens actually lights touch sensitive lights not touch sensitive push sensitive lights so again a lot of lights here as well the controls here is a conversation mirror and we need to remove this plastic to have a proper conversation to be able to see each other there's a conversation mirror you know which was the first car to get that well that happened to be the mahindra xuv auto dimming inside rear view mirror with three functions sos roadside assistance and uvo functions yeah for the uh, connected car anyways so there is a storage space right here along with a 12 volt charging socket as well meanwhile the glove box isn't that big in terms of size however you know you can actually close it like this oh, what is happening so you do you know what that is exactly anyways there's another glove box on the top now both the glove boxes are actually small in terms of size but the door pockets are really big and there's another compartment right there so in terms of practicality it's really nice and co-passenger also gets lock and unlock functions in this vehicle so it gets this uh, dual tone treatment of black and beige meanwhile there are a lot of hard plastics on the lower side of the dashboard so as you can see the car is uh, comfortable has a lot of space as well and uh, you know dual roofs is a nice thing in fact when last time i drove the car it had a uh, different features because it was the international spec model for india they has specifically added a few features like obviously bsx compliance as well as the uvo connected car yeah the connected car feature is not there plus these screens also have been added for indian market along with that air purifier now uh, you can see there's good amount of space this carpeting is also really nice and uh, this is obviously the mechanism for the door now these things are similar to the ones we saw on the other side as well so seat moves in a million ways seat is very comfortable this is actually napa leather and um, it comes from the us they call this the vip seats because of napa leather and of course this uh, leg rest as well see there's good amount of light coming in from the roof but i was worried will it touch the shark fin antenna no it will not because this is actually going inside it's not coming outside this one is coming outside this one isn't all righty there you see the dashboard actually looks really nice very much like a kia car and uh, these are roof rails i'm not sure if they're functional or not anyways now uh, this is actually for the air purifier yeah this is actually for the air purifier and there is a usb charging socket along with a laptop charger as well yeah that's right it gets a laptop charger so you can charge your laptop too now this is the smart air purifier and it's saying that right now the aqi levels are 38 which is actually very good indeed meanwhile we have two screens so let's turn them on right away says kia now you can put a usb you can put aux i think yeah yeah you can actually put an hdmi as well and uh, this is a good thing because you know what this system can be paired with the main system as a bluetooth system and you can play audio from here so there is mirroring which is possible you can actually put an amazon fire stick here as well 10.1 inch is the size of the screen you got two of them right there meanwhile ac vents are on the top light placement here yeah the lights which are placed here and of course the roof goes further behind so sunroof can be opened with this switch and there is a handle along with a hook here as well meanwhile these are actually the ac control it gets a three zone climate control air conditioning now on the left we've obviously got the temperature buttons on the right we've got the fan speed and uh, you can decide the mode as well so right now auto yeah where you actually want the air to come up down whatever or both places as well meanwhile okay let me actually close this so i press this button there it closes now in order to open this with a fifth way of doing it for that i'm just going to show you the massive windows which also get a sun blind which is really very nice the windows are really massive this can give competition to the maruti ertiga because that one also has a humongous window at the rear just imagine the amount of light it brings in okay there's a handle to hold on to right there let's open this okay you just press this so there are five ways to electronically retract the doors now we've spoken so much about everything but we have not yet got to the driver seat so we're just going to close this for the moment and uh, there it's closing let's get into the driver seat right away i uh, love the fact that the carnival is so huge in fact they also have a nine seater version it's known as a 6 plus 3 which is available in the mid trim only and uh, it has six captain rows and a three seater last row nine seater is insanity door pockets are massive yeah this one also has door pockets there you see someone's put sneakers right there 
yeah i don't really big in terms of size as such but hey it's still good enough again like i was saying the door pockets are big enough these are actually the controls for the power windows these are the controls for the outside rear view mirrors and this is for lock and unlock function okay the driver gets a 10 way electric adjust seat but the co driver does not get an electric adjust and this car gets six airbags like curtain airbag which extends from here all the way till behind so in terms of safety also kia has done a lot seats are really very nice and comfortable there's a big dead pedal right there too this is the fuse box of the vehicle this is to open the fuel lid and uh, this is for traction control turning it off this is to increase or decrease the intensity of the instrument cluster this is the headlight leveler and this is to activate ac220 for the charger which i showed you behind for the laptop actually anyways getting inside uh, there's this button somewhere yeah this one to actually open the boot of the vehicle and you obviously get a mirror along with a light here as well and this thing also extends out so you know you can block more sun meanwhile guys i know you guys have seen by what i'm shooting i'm not shooting with a gopro so that i can actually focus where i'm talking do let me know your feedback about how the video looks today the dashboard looks really very nice and uh, you know the only disappointing part is when you sit in this car after the setup you like oh my god why is the screen small so this is actually a 8 in screen meanwhile the setup actually gets a 10.25 in screen why so because this is an older car it's a global model so you've got twin cup holders right there those are my room keys actually and uh, this storage box is so big it can easily accommodate a tablet in fact this is a sunglass holder can be removed you see storage space is good there is a usb charging socket along with a 12 volt charging socket as well so plenty of um, charging options and this one also has a light back into place and uh, there there is this wireless charging pad as well along with a usb charging socket right next to it plenty of controls so the driver gets a cooling function which the co-passenger does not get which is unlike in the Seltos because there you obviously get it for both the front seats this is for the parking sensors it doesn't get a front parking camera but it gets front and rear parking sensors this is the electric parking brake this is the auto hold function and this is the active eco button basically it's the eco mode of the car now you can see the center console is not really crowded as such lot of buttons here these are obviously for the air conditioning like i told you it gets a three zone climate control system these are the controls for the music system the audio system actually engine start button now this screen is a touch screen it's nice to use the maps are also really very nice but you know it doesn't have that triple screen effect which is then the seltos it has a dual screen effect with similar graphics which is actually a nice thing now this car also misses out on ambient lighting which is there in the seltos so certain features which are there in the seltos are actually missing in this car including a blind spot monitor as well as a 360 degree parking camera like with the front camera now uh, the system is easy to use obviously certain functions are missing because which are there in the seltos you kind of used to it but it's nice it's slick and it's definitely very easy to use it obviously gets apple carplay it gets android auto connectivity too and um, phone projection will be available once brand start giving that as well along with a wireless connection for apple carplay as well as android auto connectivity so it's a nice screen let's get into reverse right away this is the reverse parking camera it gets guidelines which are obviously adaptive and uh, the sound system is really very nice of this car it uses it actually uses a harman kardon sound system with an output of 400 watt eight speakers let's play an audio right away audio quality is really very nice the steering feels nice to hold says kia right in the center the horn is also pretty good these are actually the controls for the audio system this is to receive or decline a call this is for the mode which mode basically you want to listen to radio you want to listen to bluetooth whatever this is for volume this is to go to previous or front track and this happens to be for the voice command now we're just going to be shutting the sunroof right now because i'm going to do a wiper test any moment these are the controls for the headlights it gets automatic headlights and these are actually the controls for the cruise control function now this thing is closed completely so let's right away use the wipers of the car a lot of spray on offer wipers work really very nicely and obviously it also gets rear wiper now this binnacle is really very wide obviously it looks kind of traditional in a way on the left we've got a tachometer along with a temperature meter inset on the right we've got a speedometer along with a fuel meter inset and in the center we've got a multi information display now that display gives you a compass there's a tire pressure monitoring system as well and you can obviously use a lot of functions like door light sound and convenience fuel economy it's saying 8.8 kilometers per liter right now and you can browse through this very nice and slick system which is very similar to what you've seen in a lot of hyundai cars too so not really much to talk about here and it also tells you the urea level because it uses a selective catalytic reduction and you have to put add blue in it so i think the tank is around 14 liters this is for basically bs6 compliance with an ammonia tank anyways the steering is adjustable both for reach as well as rake and uh, you actually get a good driving position so you can see what's around you very easily and nicely as well 
So definitely the cabin is loaded with a ton of features, although like I mentioned, certain features could have been added because they're available in the Seltos. Imagine a person who goes to the Kia showroom and sees the Seltos as well as the Carnival and he's like, why the cheaper Seltos has more features than the Carnival? I like this stitching as well. It's really nice. The attention detail on this car is terrific. Smart air purifier actually gets a perfume system. So there are three perfume cartridges on offer. There is lavender, there's I think ocean and one more. I don't actually remember. This is really very really nice. You can just turn it off like this and then you can, you know, feel the cabin becoming very silent indeed. All the power windows get a one touch up and down function, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, my hand is here and one touch up and down as well. So now we should really get driving for real. All right, we started to drive the Kia Carnival and let me tell you, I'm driving it in the city because I've already done a vlog of the same car earlier with the same engine. So I thought, let's do a different kind of experience with this car. So in the city, does it feel cumbersome because it's humongous in size, right? And the steering is also a hydraulic unit. So does it feel cumbersome? No, actually it does not. It, it actually feels very easy to drive now, obviously, because it's an automatic transmission. But more important than that is the fact that it is actually a monocoque platform SUV. However, it still weighs a lot at 2,000. 200 kgs around whereabouts but you know performance is really very nice the engine is big big in the sense it's really big it's a 2.2 liter unit okay endeavor is like what make our job should do but it's a 2.2 liter unit which produces almost 200 horsepower 197 horsepower 200 ps of power and you know ground clearance is not an issue in spite of the fact that it gets 180 unladen ground clearance and get into the gas there's an initial lag but the mid-range is really nice and sweet it punches really hard and strong in the mid-range but then runs breathless in the top end redlining close to four and a half thousand rpm driving this car is not a challenge at all in the city because you know it gives you a very good view of what's around and the windows are massive in terms of size you sit high up gives you a commanding driving position so it's like a mpv with an suv driving position which is certainly a good thing now now, it doesn't get paddle shifters and the gearbox can be a little slow in responding now it happens to be a eight speed unit an eight speed sportsmatic transmission which kia likes to call this is a torque converter it's not the fastest in shifts the you know gear ratios are spread very wide as well but in terms of overall performance as long as you don't get hard into the gas it is more than adequate as you can see it is a complete mess here but still the carnival feels so easy the windows are big the mirrors are also massive in terms of size that's what she said so you can see a lot of what's around you and want to get going quickly well get into the gas hard then there's that initial lag and then it pulls really nicely and strongly that eco mode just ruins things because it does the performance of the car not really making it exciting to drive but then in regular mode as well with almost 200 ps of power actually 200 ps of power and 197 horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque which comes in at a low 1500 rpm peaking in at 2750 rpm that is the reason once you're in the meat of the torque band well it gets going smoothly with a lot of enthusiasm as well now on bad roads as well ride quality is pretty good indeed because it does a great job suspension is obviously on the softer side with this vehicle so while the suspension is on the softer side it is not overtly soft in the sense that it becomes bouncy so this has got the right balance between ride and handling handling because it doesn't feel nervous at all now obviously this car has a ton of body roll and more and every time i get into the gas there is this you know delay between the car realizing okay we need to get going and of course the motor also giving you the same thing there's a lot of grip on offer now this is a front wheel drive car we can just turn off traction control by pressing a button here traction control disabled it's got a slew of electronic aids traction control brake assist cornering brake control as well as rollover mitigation esp as well so you know a lot of these electronics to make sure the car is always safe and not going out of line but this is a car which takes 13.6 seconds to go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour all right let's get into manual mode by shifting the gear lever towards ourselves and there downshifting here it goes top speed is 180 kilometers per hour this motor is super duper refined in typical hyundai fashion in fact it kind of feels sort of artificial in the way it sounds trying to be sporty but it's not sporty but def definitely does not even have the diesel clatter so kia has done a great job in terms of refinement levels of this motor just so smooth so refined and it only gets vocal past 3000 rpm here as you get into the gas performance is nice punchy and short footed as well more than enough you would ever need in an mpv which is carrying seven eight or nine people depending on which variant you 
opt for. Braking performance is also really very strong. It's actually very sure-footed, but you know, when you need a downshift, sometimes the gearbox can hesitate a bit. It's not really urgent in that sense. It could have been a little bit more, you know, urgent and straight away give you a downshift. But this car is more about smoothness. It's more about refinement. It's about carrying people in comfort and luxury, not pinning you back into the seat, which the Carnival certainly does not do in any way whatsoever. Now here we're going to take a U-turn. Now the turning radius is obviously on the higher side with the Carnival because it's a humongous car in the real sense. The car I'd driven before had some radar-based systems as well, like autonomous braking and whatnot. This one does not. Here we go. But you'll not really face an issue with uh, all that and more in terms of driving the car in the city because you just about manage. It's actually very easy in spite of the hydraulic steering. It does not feel that heavy somehow. It's not even as light as you would expect from uh, most cars from Korea. That said, handling is not the forte of this car, but it is better than neutral for sure, better than average for sure. Because when you actually try to push it around the corners, there's obviously a ton of body roll. The steering does weigh up well at high speeds, but it doesn't have that pinpoint precision either. But that's not what you would expect from an MPV, now would you? But it remains very glued to the road at high speeds. That long wheelbase comes into play and in spite of the long wheelbase, ground clearance is not really an issue on this vehicle. I love the fact that the Carnival is so easy to drive in spite of its dimensions. And if I may, I'm drawing parallels to none other than the Mercedes V-Class. Which kind of feels like a handful to drive. This one does not. The V-Class obviously is obnoxious in terms of size. This is no less in terms of size and obnoxiousness. But Kia has absolutely done a great job by launching a car in a new segment altogether. Because what has happened is that everyone who's coming to the Indian market is just launching cars in similar segments. Now, the only thing is that you have to keep your eyes really wide, as wide as they can get to make sure that you can see what's around you. Because you have to be really very careful of driving this car, especially parking can be a little bit of a pain in your rear end. However, you know, a front camera would have been a nice touch for sure. Maybe self-park would have also worked, but I don't think a car of this size can make a self-park system work. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor and yeah, wheel spin is well contained because the tyres are super wide on this car. Performance is really very slick. Now, before you guys draw parallels with the Toyota Innova, let me tell you something. This car is leagues and bounds better than the Innova. The Innova is a no competitor at all because the level of space this is actually more towards luxury. The Innova is more of a workhorse, obviously because of the Toyota logo and Toyota's reliability. The Innova is a very reliable and proven car. The Kia Carnival obviously will also prove to be a very reliable car because it's been selling in the global market since a long time and has proven itself there as well. So as I see it, the Carnival is an absolute fantastic fantastic machine and should sell in decent numbers i'm not too sure how many units kia will be able to sell but i expect the pricing of this top variant which i'm driving right now to be 33.5 lakhs which slots it right above the toyota innova in the indian lineup in a different segment altogether this is actually a new segment of a car and trust me it is brilliant in more than a few ways for sure now i'm entering the faluknama palace and uh, this is a really nice place for testing the right quality of this car because we don't have a proper road we have this sort of you know what do you call these things bricks or whatever but you see the ride is really nice and composed and it does not feel bouncy at all so they just got the right balance between ride and handling and you can see a lot of the carnivals here because it is actually the media test drive of this vehicle which is happening right now so guys if you like this vlog you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys okay here we go downshift 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 and there it goes bye bye see ya take care